For my senior project, I decided to present a lecture recital on Richard Wagner's Bessendorf cycle. During my last three years as an undergraduate student, I discovered how much I enjoy singing German art song, also known as Lieder. My instructors have mentioned I have a Wagnerian voice. A Wagnerian singer is a dramatic soprano with a large and powerful voice. I decided to see if I could conquer Wagnerian works. In this lecture recital, I will present a complete performance of the Wessendorf cycle, as well as a small lecture based on the work. Richard Wagner is a German composer best known for his dramatic opera works, such as Das Reingut, Tristan und Isolde, and many more. He was born May 22, 1813 in Leipzig, Germany, to Johanna Rosin and Karl Freitschich Wagner. He was raised by his stepfather Ludwig Geyer until the age eight. Geyer encouraged Richard's interest in arts. Wagner's musical education started with piano lessons, then harmony lessons from Christian Gottlieb and Müller. He was inspired to venture into compositions by performances of Karl Maria von Weber's De Freischütz and Beethoven's Fidelio. He started seriously composing between 1829 and 1830, with his first pieces being two piano sonatas and a string quartet piano arrangement of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. In 1813, he completed his first opera, The Fien. The next year, he married an actress named Christine Wilhelmina Mina Planner. They remained married for 20 years. They had no children. In 1852, Wagner met a wealthy silk merchant by the name of Otto Bessendorf from Zurich. Otto was an admirer of Wagner's work and helped him through some financial issues. Through this professional relationship, Wagner met Mathilde Wessendorf and they struck up the romantic affair that inspired Wagner's Wessendorf cycle. Agnes Mathilde Wessendorf was born December 23, 1828 to Carl and Johanna Luckmeyer. She grew up very privileged and highly educated. In 1849, she married Otto Wessendorf a successful businessman who represented silk imports and also owned Bessendock and Company. Together, they had a total of five children, but they tragically lost several and they lived all but one. Matilda's family was very respectable in social circles. It was through her husband that she met Wagner, as their wealth allowed them to support upcoming artists. Matilda was a writer and poet. She published two books, wrote children's stories, plays, and also produced other works as well. Creating art song is usually a two-person job. The first person must write text, in this case, the poetry. The second person composes the music for the text. In order for there to be a composition, the composer must understand exactly what the text is insinuating. When it comes to Wagner's compositions, they tend to share particular musical characteristics, like the expansion of musical structure through the use of lame motifs, Lay motifs are recurrent motives in the musical or literary composition that becomes tightly associated with a particular person, idea, or situation. In the case of this cycle, the most important person associated with the work is Matilda Wessendorf, whose poems provide the cycle's lyrics. In order to understand art song, one must understand the poems before analyzing the composer's compositional choices. Common themes and imagery found in the lyrics from the German Romantic period include the evocative world of nature. The evocative world of nature is represented by a lonely forest. The seductiveness of mystery. This is often represented by the night. Heightened individuality. This is usually dramatized by the figure of a wanderer. Spiritual salvation. This is expressed through a yearning for peaceful death. Every piece in Wagner's cycle presents at least one or more of these themes nature, mystery, individuality, or spiritual salvation. In the first piece of the cycle, De Engel, translated as the angel, we hear reference to salvation, particularly. The first stanza mentions heaven and angels, referencing a spiritual relation. In the second and third stanza, the lyrics reference silent suffering as a protagonist silently prays for a release of pain, which could be interpreted as a prayer for death. The final two stanzas hint that a peaceful death has been achieved. While this is a part of Wagner's cycle for Matilda Wessendorf, it is unclear how this piece fits into or represents any part of the cycle. This piece talks about wishing for death and finally achieving an eternal peace. In order to create an imagery of heaven, Wagner uses arpeggiated chords to evoke the dreamlike and memory childhood stories of angels that remind us of the prelude to the Rasraingot, according to an analysis of Robert Carr. 
So here are the cores highlighted by the green parentheses. <clears throat> this goes on for the first 13 measures and then it's disrupted by anxious cord that changes the atmosphere when the text discusses suffering, a suffering heart. So as you can see, after the dark green parentheses come in the light green parentheses highlighting the anxious cords, disrupting the peaceful, the peacefulness. Heather J. Baldwin points out in her DMA thesis for the University of Kansas that on the word angle, which occurs three times in the piece, there is a leap of fourth. The second instance of angle has an additional leap of fourth to each, the highest note in the piece on the phrase da der Engel wie der Schwett. There an angel floats down. This adds text painting to the phrase as the voice gently descends down the, at the end of the vocal line. So here is the first angel and the leap of fourth here. The second angel, another leap of fourth and an additional leap of fourth to the G and the third leap of fourth to the G. The arpeggiated chords come back and the vocal line ascends above the staff to represent the angel appearing as well as their ascension together. This continues to the end when a peaceful death is achieved. So here you can see I've highlighted in dark green again that the arpeggiated chords come back and they continue to the end of the piece. The most difficult part about learning this piece was achieving the appropriate dynamics. When learning a piece of music, I practice it on a vowel at a forte dynamic to work it into my body. Throughout the piece, Wagner dictated the kind of dynamics he wanted. An example of where I struggled to perform the specific dynamic is in measure 19. This is measure 19 right here. In this measure, Wagner notes says, Geistiger aber zart, in a raised but soft voice. In addition, the second stanza, there are three lines that start with the text das wo, so that and that have the same interval, but I raise by a whole step each time. By measure 19, the third dust bowl, the pitch starts on a B, making the third note a high E flat in the staff. Because each dust bowl went up a half step, I interpreted as also making my sound much louder. Here's how I performed this section, clearly ignoring the notes saying in a raised but soft voice. Oh, oh. By the time I got to the third das wo, here there's two B flats, and then the third note is an E, is an E, and it says in a soft but raised voice. Instead of keeping it soft, I just attack the E instead of keeping it soft. <clears throat> the second piece in this cycle. Stay still, translated as stay still, references the theme of nature and individuality. Once again, the evocative world of nature is presented in the lyrics as by a lonely forest, while heightened individuality is represented by a dramatized wandering figure. The text poem, the text of this poem focuses on the movement of the world and time, and asks time to stop, to leave the wanderer be. This poem was given to Wagner when Matilda's husband Otto discovered the mutual feelings between Wagner and Matilda. This lends credence to the idea that Matilda felt that her feelings were dynamic and that everyone around her, especially her husband, was aware of her emotional affair. She's asking the universe to stop time, to leave her alone, and to cease affecting her emotions. Matilda wants time to stop as an attempt to halt her growing feelings for Wagner. Wagner sets his idea musically. In the beginning of this piece, Wagner has the right hand playing groups of 16 quintuplets ascending upward in every measure for the first 32 measures, and has the left hand playing block chords on each downbeat. So here I've highlighted in yellow the 16th ascending quintuplets, and then the block chords in orange. This happens for the first 32 measures, which is the first two pages of the piece. 
My interpretation of the 16th notes represent Matilda's feelings growing quickly and the left hand chords represent the relentless steady plot of time. The feeling of racing drawn from the right hand figures then changes when the music turns into soft, gentle chords and arpeggios. The vocal line also relaxes as the text indicates that Matilda has accepted her fate, falling in love. Each phrase is a rising melodic line that provides elongation and extensions. So here uh, I've marked that the 16th notes are no longer ascending and there's just arpeggios. Like here's one example, here's another in the red and more in the red of arpeggiation. And then I've underlined the text in purple because when you listen to the piece, you can hear that every phrase is elongated more and more. This piece was composed in a way that expresses the racing time. The first half feels constant and steady until measure 32. This piece has a lot of text which also lends a sense of speed. When learning this piece, I have to sacrifice either the text or the pitches or even both to make it through the material quickly. I found the first half of the piece the most difficult to learn because of the fast tempo. So I had to learn it at a much slower tempo than what it is originally set to. After working the text and the pitches slowly, I still managed to miss a couple of notes in my performance. The right hand played many ascending notes as I descended, which made it difficult to sing the correct pitches. So here I've marked with blue arrows where I ascend which is multiple times throughout the first two pages. And then the red arrows are highlighting the right hand 16th notes ascending upwards. So it's made it hard for me to keep my notes, notes sustained. <clears throat> the fast tempo also made it difficult to voice the pitches and keep my voice vibrating. In order to have each pitch voiced, I had to constantly remind myself to vibrate regardless of the length of each beat. As a strategy to help me ground the pitches, my instructor suggested that I play left hand chords to help me identify where the vocal part fits in with the piece. So here I highlighted the chords. Essentially, I had to play every chord underneath my part in the down B. And essentially, I learned that I'll find my note in the chord. So for this, for this chord, this G right here is on the top of this chord. This A flat is on the top of this chord. And so and that was pretty much how every one of my pitches fit into the chord. And here is an example of me singing this piece, which is a little bit fast. <laughs> The third piece of the Wessendorf cycle is Im Treibhaus, in the hot house. The poem addresses themes of nature represented by a lonely forest, actually represented by trees in the lyrics. In the first stanza, Matilda refers to trees as children from distant lands and asks them why they are grieving. In the second stanza, she goes on to talk about how the trees are suffering. In the third stanza, she states that she knows that they're suffering because they share the same fate and she is missing their homeland too. This text references Matilda's life. The trees are a metaphor for her suffering. In being separated from their homeland, they represent her being separated from Wagner. The song intimates that Matilda now knows how much they are grieving because when, she, when her home was being constructed, trees were imported from distant lands. This was a final poem given to Wagner. In this piece, Matilda acknowledges that she's in the hothouse as everyone surrounding her and Wagner has become aware of their affair and they must end it. In this piece, the trees mentioned in the text are a metaphor for Matilda's feelings. Wagner represents this musically by having the opening measure act as intertwining branches with enormous weight of heat. The music for the introduction is played a total of three times, once in the intro itself and the next two times in the first two stanzas. So here is the intro highlighted. It's played in the first stanza and then in the second stanza. And if you look at it closely, 
all the nodes and rhythm are the same each time. In the fourth stanza where the text is in first person, poor plants, I know you're suffering well, for we share one fate. The music is written in the style of recitative and the vocal line is exposed over held chords. So here you can see, me move myself. Here you can see where the fourth stanza starts. I've highlighted here. And there's chords underneath it just being held out. And then there's no chords, which is exposing the vocal line a lot. When learning this piece, I struggled in singing the proper pitches. In this piece, there are a lot of half-step movements, which can be overshot or not entirely reached. I needed to approximate my pitches and, there was, and I was not sure how much I had to move. Some examples where I really struggled were when going from a G natural to a G sharp on the text, bang 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 him, and an E flat to E natural on the text, bleche grünem Zaum. So here I've highlighted my examples bang 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 him, a G natural to a G sharp, and then bleche grünem Zaum, an E flat to an E natural. The chords under the text Blitte Grün und Zaum made it hitting the correct pitch is especially difficult as I had to sing the same pitch on the downbeat as the same pitch was played on the offbeat. So as you can see here, my note had to be sung on the downbeat and then the same note that I was singing was played on the offbeat. This was hard for me because whatever note I would sing, was then played after me. And because I heard the note that I was supposed to be singing after me, it made me unsure if my note was correct at all. And here's the example of this. The fourth piece, Schmerzen, grief or anguish, also references nature, in this case represented by the sun. Matilda writes about how the sun dies overnight as it sets into the ocean. She writes that even though the sun repeatedly sets, it still rises the next day as bright as ever. She sees the sun's actions as motivation to keep going despite her distraught emotions in the final stanza she writes. Oh, how thankful I am that nature gives me anguish. With this, she states that although she is upset over the issues life brings her, she will rise again like the sun, powerful after every night. In the fourth piece, Matilda asks the sun how it is always so powerful despite dying, setting every night. Wagner sets this music. In the first two measures before the singer begins, the right hand plays an ascending and descending line. This tactic can be heard throughout the piece representing the sun rising and setting. So here I've highlighted the ascending and descending line in the first two measures. The same descending line played in the introduction is also sung in the vocal line as the text asks the sun why it's weeping. So here I've highlighted specifically the bottom ascending and descending line. I'm sorry because I noticed that it's the same thing here and here. It's not the top one, but it's the bottom one. And then it's the same thing in this section too. Underneath the second stanza, eighth note chords are played ascending upwards as the text glorifies the sun for rising once again. So here in the yellow, the 16th notes are rising slowly, they're rising because the sun's being glorified. And then a descending line is once again played in both the vocal line and the right hand at the beginning of the third and fourth stanza. So here the ascending line occurs again, and then here too. The only difference is that these two ascending lines and descending start on an E flat, and this one starts on a D over here. This piece has a lot of ascending and descending lines in the staff throughout the piece. At first when learning this piece, I did not properly support the notes in the staff, so I did not support the notes above the staff. There are two moments in this piece where the vocal line sings above the staff. The first note is an A flat on the text glory and then a G on O. 
These two moments were the most difficult as I would be flat every time. In order to correct these pitches, I played the notes and the vocal line backwards so my voice could know the leaps when I would sing them forward. So by playing them backwards, I mean, I would play a G and A flat, B flat, C, E flat, and A flat on the piano instead of playing them the way they are descending. This way my voice would get used to how far the jumps were and everything. So here is an example of that, of oh, well, both of these notes. Sorry, I meant to say this is an example of them being fixed now. And then here is O. The final piece, Troymet Dreams, presents the themes of seductiveness of mystery, the evocative world of nature, and spiritual salvation. In this piece, mystery can be heard in the lyrics' constant questioning of dreams. The theme of nature can be found in two stanzas that compare the dreams growing with nature. Hinting Matilda's emotions, the dreams are also growing. The theme of spiritual death is referenced in the statements, heavenly tidings blissfully pass through my soul and then sinking into the grave. In this piece, Matilda is looking for answers about the mysterious dreams and feelings she is encountering. She is afraid of what she is experiencing and goes on to describe her feelings growing like nature does and eventually accepts these feelings. She also realizes that she must hide them. In this piece, Matilda is questioning her dreams by comparing them to nature. Wagner's ascending and descending eighth note chords lead me to imagine the ocean, especially in light of the text and have not like empty foam. This text is referring to Matilda's dreams not fading as the ocean foams us. So before this first page of music, oh, sorry, before this page, there is uh, an entire page of just accompaniment playing and it's an introduction just playing these eight note chords. And it really does sound like ocean waves rising and crashing down. And it really made me also think that because of her text and have not like sea foam faded. So she's just saying that her dreams are not fading like sea foam. I agree with Clark's analysis of the second stanza. The musical language ultimately evolves into an anxious dotted rhythm and syncopated bass embodying the blooming of dreams. Concurrently, the soaring voice signifies a heavenly message passing blissfully through the soul. This can be heard in the vocal line through the second, third, and fourth stanza. I interpreted this as Matilda embracing her emotions. So here I circled and highlighted with red where the dotted rhythm and syncopation occurs. So here's one, here's another example, and another one, another one, another one, another one here. So this happens a lot throughout the piece, especially towards the end, because like I said, she's embracing her emotions. And since it's syncopated, it, it speeds up a little bit because maybe it's a bit of a rush for her. The final piece, Troymet Dreams, presents the themes of seductiveness of mystery, the evocative world of nature, and spiritual salvation. In this piece, mystery can be heard in the lyrics' constant questioning of dreams. The theme of nature can be found in two stanzas that compare the dreams growing with nature. Hinting Matilda's emotions, the dreams are also growing. The theme of spiritual death is referenced in the statements, heavenly tidings blissfully pass through my soul, and then sinking into the grave. In this piece, Matilda is looking for answers about the mysterious dreams and feelings she is encountering. She is afraid of what she is experiencing and goes on to describe her feelings growing like nature does and eventually accepts these feelings. She also realizes that she must hide them. In this piece, Matilda is questioning her dreams by comparing them to nature. Wagner's ascending and descending eighth note chords lead me to imagine the ocean, especially in light of the text and have not like empty foam. This text is referring to Matilda's dreams not fading as the ocean foams us. So before this first page of music, oh, sorry, before this page, there is a, an entire page of just accompaniment playing and it's an introduction just playing these eight note chords. And it really does sound like ocean waves rising and crashing down. And it really made me also think that because of her text, and have not like sea foam faded. So she's just saying that 
her dreams are not fading like sea foam. I agree with Clark's analysis of the second stanza, the musical language ultimately evolves into an anxious studded rhythm and syncopated bass embodying the blooming of dreams. Concurrently, the soaring voice signifies a heavenly message passing blissfully through the soul. This can be heard in the vocal line through the second, third, and fourth stanza. I interpreted this as Matilda embracing her emotions. So here I circled and highlighted with red where the dotted rhythm and syncopation occurs. So here's one, here's another example, and another one, another one, another one, another one here. So this happens a lot throughout the piece, especially towards the end, because like I said, she's embracing her emotions. And since it's syncopated, it, it speeds up a little bit because maybe it's a bit of a rush for her. When learning this piece, I struggle with the constant changes in tempo. This piece has moving parts, both slow and fast. I struggled with the tempo mainly because I was letting the pianist lead me rather than leading him. I needed to learn to set my own tempo. And an example of this is in the third page, second staff, Alfergeis and Einkedenken. In this section, Wagner's directions include a ritardando and an acceleration. When learning this portion, I took a long ritardando while the pianist took a shorter one that rushed into the next part. Sit. Here I have circled the direction saying a retardando and an acceleration. And I didn't take that one for starting the part. So here is an earlier performance where I was I was rushed into the next part. I had to fix this because it was a bit longer than it should be, and also because I had to dictate for the pianist when I was going to onto the accelerated portion. There wasn't really anything I could do to fix this other than take an initiative and just show the pianist what I was going to do. So now here is an example of it fixed. <laughs> this project was to determine if I could sing Wagnerian works. After working on the cycle, I've determined that I am capable of performing these pieces. In the beginning, this was my only goal, but because this project required me to research, I learned much more that I will be applying to future works. I learned the common themes found throughout German romantic poetry and art, which will help me understand and identify what I am singing about in other romantic works. I have also learned how to analyze and connect the composer's choices to the text of the piece. I learned to reflect on and identify my struggles in order to correct them through various techniques, rather than just listening to someone else sing the piece. I am excited to pursue other pieces in this way, even though it is a long process. It will allow me to give a proper performance of the piece. Although I am finished with this project, I am not finished with this cycle. I plan to one day perform the entire cycle with a full orchestra. I have only scratched the surface of my potential and must keep digging deeper. Thank you.